Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found, we stand on holy ground. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, our radiant King of light. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him, in faith receive from him. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. Lord God, we lean on you, the one who has drawn near to us in Christ, the one who comes to touch us with your love and grace and remake us in the image of your Son. When we feel bowed down by the pressures of the world, when we feel threatened by the future, when we feel stretched beyond our capabilities, may we know your love and your power lifting us up. Help us to cast our cares upon you and no refreshment for our souls. God of mercy and grace, you know the secrets of our hearts, how blind we are at times to our own faults, yet harsh in judging others. How proud we often are of our success, yet grudging in our praise of others. Be gracious to us. Do not remember our sins and offences. We ask your forgiveness for them. We entrust our lives into your care and pray that you might strengthen us in our spirits, that you might draw us to yourself and renew our hope and faith in you. Cleanse us and renew us and lift us up to be people who bring you delight and further the cause of your kingdom. We ask these things in Jesus' name, even as we pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. Psalm 46 God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The Psalms can be a wonderful source of inspiration. There is an honesty in the Psalms. Whether they are de a declaration of praise or a cry of anguish, they speak from the heart. And even when they start with a cry of despair, the psalmist invariably works through the issues that are troubling him until at the end faith rises up. 
Psalm 46 affirms the help and strength that we can find in God in our times of trial. What does it mean by saying God is a refuge for his people? It suggests to us the idea of something like the cities of refuge that they had in the Old Testament. You can read about them in Numbers chapter 35. God who gave instructions for the building of his, his ideal nation in Israel called on them to have certain cities dotted around that land that were cities of refuge. In those days they worked on the principle of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. If anybody injured someone's eye, they had better look out. If anybody knocked out someone's tooth, they would suffer the same. In the cities of refuge, there was a touch of mercy, though. If a man killed somebody by accident, he could flee to a city of refuge. This is a picture that we have of God being a refuge who is continually available to his people. In other words, it might seem sometimes that the flood or earthquake or storm or pestilence are coming and you fear you're going to be totally engulfed. But God can be our help in our time of need. The first thing that you must realize is that God is continually available. This is an Old Testament passage, but the New Testament amplifies it even further. The Lord Jesus himself said that we must come unto him, all of us who are weary and heavy laden, and he will give us rest. So the simple message as to what to do in time of trouble is this. Admit that God is your refuge and you need his help. Christ is the one who opens his arms to you and says, Come to me with all your burdens. Roll them upon me. Give me the problem and I promise to be what you need. Secondly, we must realize that God, our refuge, is not only continually available, but he is thoroughly adequate. For it says in this verse, God is our refuge and also our strength. There would be no good saying that God is our refuge if he weren't strong enough. There is no way trouble can come into a person's life, however overwhelming it might be, and be greater than the strength of God to enable them to survive it. And we must realize that God is our refuge, not only continually available and thoroughly adequate, but thirdly, readily accessible as well. I love what it says in verse 1. Not only is God our refuge and our strength, God is an ever-present help in trouble. In other words, as far as the Old Testament sage was concerned, he knew he didn't have to reach further than the tips of his fingers to be able to lay hold of the hand of God. As far as the New Testament saint is concerned, he doesn't even have to reach that far, for he believes that the God who loves him sent Christ to die for him, raised him up and put him into his life, is alive within him. You can't get anybody more present than that in you. In the Old Testament, the city of God on Mount Zion, ancient Jerusalem, was a picture of the fact that God in his tabernacle was resident among his people. We can see this also as a picture of the church which is composed of people born again of the Spirit of God, members of the body of Christ, and God is resident in our midst. He is the Most High. In other words, He is the one who is seated on the throne above all thrones as the one who is ordering the universe. Therefore, He is a God of power and purpose. This doesn't mean that you are immune from trouble. It doesn't mean that you won't have problems. But the exciting thing about it is, in the midst of trouble, you know what it is to have a God alive and alert within you, who is seated on the throne of the Most High. 
He is a God of overflowing grace and strength and love. And he is a God of power and purpose alive within you. The psalm says, The God of Jacob is our fortress. Jacob was a twisted individual and a cheat. But God stuck with him and God worked with him and over the years he dealt with Jacob. He closed in on Jacob and because God stuck with him and didn't give up on him, one glad day Jacob said, I quit God, now do what you can do with me. God said to him, I'll tell you what I can do. I'll change you from Jacob into Israel. I'll change you from the one who is twisted and warped and mean into a prince of God. The meaning of the name Israel. So when we read of the God of Jacob we can think of a God who is of unbelievable patience. We must also realize that God sends a river to his people. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. At the beginning the psalm was speaking to us about what to do in times of trouble. And now the psalmist is talking about a river that makes us glad. Of course the two can be fitted together when you begin to comprehend that God is the one who sends a river of blessing to his people. If you want to check on this river do a study of Ezekiel chapter 47 and of John 7 verses 37 to 39. If you look into these passages you'll see that the river of God that flows in the city of God is a fabulous picture of the activity of the Spirit of God. To make this clear the Lord Jesus in John chapter 7 said if anyone is thirsty let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Then a word of explanation comes from John. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. What do you do in trouble? Call on God to refresh you with his streams of living water to make you strong so that you can cope. Be open to the work of his spirit within you. What do we do in trouble? We need to realize that God is a refuge, that he, is, he resides within us and that he can bring a river of blessing to us. And then we need to relax to be still in his presence, to rest in his presence. It's not talking about physical stillness, it's talking about heart stillness, simply relaxing in the Lord Jesus, God with us. We need to be still and know that he is God, that he is with us as our strength and shield. Receive his peace that passes understanding and give him the praise that he deserves. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbor and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick and to assure the isolated of our love and your love for your name's sake. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. 
in their loneliness be their consolation, in their anxiety be their hope, in their darkness be their light, through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All my hope on God is founded, he doth still my trust renew, me through change and chance he guideth, only good and only true. God unknown, he alone, calls my heart to be his own. Pride of man and earthly glory, sword and crown, betray his trust. What with care and toil he buildeth, tower and temple fall to dust. But God's power, hour by hour, is my temple and my tower. God's great goodness I endureth, deep his wisdom passing thought. Splendor, light and life attend him, beauty springeth out of naught. Evermore from his store newborn worlds rise and adore. Daily doth the almighty giver bounteous gifts on us bestow. His desire our soul delighteth, pleasure leads us where we go. Love doth stand at his hand, joy doth wait on his command. Still from man to God eternal, sacrifice of praise be done. High above all praise is praising for the gift of Christ his Son. Christ doth call one and all, ye who follow shall not fall. Thanks be to God, and may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore.